Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and today I want to talk about INTJs and INFJs and our sometimes obsessive behavior. Yeah, sometimes INTJs and INFJs can fall into the more unhealthy forms of introverted intuitive judging. We can go so deep within an idea, we can become so obsessed with realizing and making an idea come true, that we detach and distance ourselves from the world around us. We don't hear or see the people around us anymore. We don't take in or listen to or observe our surroundings anymore. We fail to take care of the day-to-day -day tasks and necessities of the world around us. Yes, introverted intuitive judging is a form of proactive, self-directed, self-organized intuition. It goes deep inside, searches for an original image or idea, one original image and idea, and then thinks obsessively about how this idea looks and how it sh is shaped and how to make it happen. Yeah, sometimes as an INFJ I can get so lost in my YouTube channel and on my website, thinking about my projects, that I become almost incapacitated in my ability to do anything else. I can't listen to or discuss or talk with other people. I become unresponsive to others. I briefly, frequently detach from everything that's happening around me. I'm not there. I don't listen. And if I listen, it's very half-heartedly. I respond on autopilot without thinking about what I'm even saying yes to. And what I've come to realize is this can sometimes become very unhealthy if it starts to damage your relationships, if it makes your partner, friends or family members feel invisible or ignored. And INFJs and INTJs certainly have that issue of making the people around us feel invisible. So today I want to talk about how INFJs and INTJs can learn to manage this intuition as well as how partners and friends can help INFJs and INTJs when they go too far off the deep end. You know, most INFJs and INTJs, they fall into this unhealthy spectrum of first becoming hyper-focused and obsessed about an idea or vision, then spending a long time working on this vision, only to realize they are leaving a huge gap in everything that is related to extroverted sensing and perceiving. Eventually they are forced to confront an ever massive growing pile of neglected tasks and friends and people. Yes, eventually uh, you have to come back to the surface and sometimes it's gonna suck to come back to the surface just because of what you have left there, just because of everything you have abandoned. So the thought and the realization that these things are there can be massive weight on your shoulder. A lot of us fall in the, the trap of thinking about what we should be doing and realizing we need to get out and realizing we need to come back, but still staying inside, still focusing on this world, still feeling finding yourself unable to leave this idea behind. And I'm going to explain to you why this happens, and I'm going to explain to you what you can do about it. The core problem with judging is judging wants closure, and until it has closure, it will keep going. It will keep going for as long as it takes, it will want to keep pushing forward. And if you have a big or grand vision or idea, or a bold project or a plan that will take a long time to realize, Something inside you will always feel inclined to keep going, constantly, keep going, push more, do more, spend more time thinking, working, dreaming about that idea. So the first thing you want to start doing is write down your ideas, describe in as vivid detail as possible the image you see inside. Spend as much time as possible organizing and outlining your ideas. Do not just think about it, but also write it down. Proact your intuition. Make your intuition become real in some form. It is much easier to take a break from your process if you know you have it written down somewhere. If you know you can come back to it. Because yes, it is a fear that if you leave it behind and get distracted, you will lose it. But if you know it's there and if you also beyond that have shared this idea with others, talked about it with friends or family members, 
you will know that idea is still there and can be picked up at any time and so there is no problem with taking a short break. Number two, actively schedule and dedicate time to your intuitive process. Yeah, what I mean with this is actively spend time realizing your dreams and ideas. If you know that you have time this day to think about this, if you know that you will have time later this week to come back to this idea, it will be a lot easier to take a break. If you feel that you are giving up on the idea and that you don't have any time at all, it will become more difficult to resist the temptation of going to it and doing it anyways and forgetting about the tasks and duties that you have right ahead of you. By not acting on your ideas and by not actively moving forward on your thought process, you'll find yourself getting stuck, repeating the same thought over and over again. And often what will happen is your idea will only become increasingly intense, the image more and more vivid, and sometimes even more delusional. What that means is the longer time you spend trying to realize your idea in reality, the more detached it becomes from reality. That means you might start entertaining bold conspiracy theories or uh, stupid, outrageous, eccentric beliefs that have no place and will never have a place in the world. And the more intense it becomes, also the more difficult it becomes to realize, the more crazy or outrageous or impossible the more delusional it becomes, the more you will find yourself unable to proact on and to put out your intuition in the real world. And so the more isolated you will become. So you have to recognize this spiral of uh, your ideas becoming increasingly intense and outrageous and impossible because you spend less and less time making it possible, making it real, making it a normal part of the world. Yeah, essentially one day you will want your ideas, your vision to become reflected in the world around you. You will want to see traces of your thought process in your workplace or in your environment or in your home. You will want to know that you have done and made something with your intuition. Otherwise it becomes a bold and unfounded confidence that has no backing in the real world. Number three, share your ideas in your thought present with your friends and family. Yeah, actively encourage people to join your thought process. Actively learn to rely on other people for an alternative perspective and viewpoint. Recognize your blind spot is you tend to see things only from one perspective, your perspective. And recognize that if you can take on and incorporate the perspectives of other people in your ideas, your ideas can become more bold, more meaningful, and more valuable to the world itself. Recognize by that by becoming secretive and by hiding and repressing your ideas, your ideas will only become more eccentric. You will only become more and more stuck in one gear. You will go over the same track over and over and you will never get anywhere you will get stuck on A to B and you'll forget about and you'll find yourself unable to ever reach that point you really want to get to, point C. Beyond that, I want to talk about uh, one of the top NJ fallacies and that is if it's not immediately relevant to my ideas and my goals, it's not relevant. Yeah, a lot of us will detach from and distance ourselves from chances to learn subjects or to enter or take in information simply because it won't be relevant to our long-term goals and our vision. But in reality, the visions and ideas of INFJs and INTJs tend to be quite all-encompassing. We have one big idea that applies to basically everything we do. And that means almost everything we learn will eventually benefit our ability to execute our vision in reality. And so the calligraphy lessons that Steve Jobs took became crucial to developing his iPhone. And so the subjects you took in school or the things you have chances to learn right now, the driver's license you could get or the uh, project you could take up or the part-time course you could study, those could all be positive. And so learn to recognize and to embrace opportunity. Don't say no to opportunity engage in opportunity and recognize that every path you take will eventually and can eventually lead to your end goal 
as long as you tie the knot. The amazing part of the INFJ and the INTJ mind is we take all our ideas, all our information, all our perspectives and we put them all together. We make them all connect, we make them all lead to the same angle point, the same viewpoint, the same idea, the same system. That means we learn to tie the knot on everything, we learn to connect everything, we learn to put everything together. We can consume, we can take in knowledge. We are not stuck, we are not blocked, we are not rock. We are quite fluid, we are quite much water. And that means all we have to do is we have to open our mind, we have to open our system, and we have to find a compartment for the things we learn. So systemize everything you learn and create your own system for what you learn. Write down and organize and put the ideas together and you'll find there's a room for everything everywhere. As long as you learn to organize, there's going to be a room for everything somewhere. Now beyond that you have to recognize there are good and bad distractions and you have to recognize beyond that that as you go out and you meet up with friends and you do things, your thoughts remain in processing mode. In the back of your mind, your ideas are still there, your thoughts are still there, everything is still computing, everything is still processing. And so the information you take in and the experiences you have in the day can actively help you process and realize your ideas. Yeah, most of your insight and eurekas and wow insight modes come at the most random of times when you are doing something trivial or completely meaningless. Yeah, often the more you try to think about it, the less you actively think about it. And yay cannot be actively conjured. It's just something that goes and runs on its own. It's a flow function. You don't have to push yourself to use it. A flow function comes naturally whenever you relax. And now it's time to recognize the source of INTJ and INFJ obsessiveness. Because most of it tends to stem from the same source. Extroverted sensing perceiving stress. Yeah, the more you rush yourself, the more you tell yourself it's now or never, the more you tell yourself you have to do it now or it's never gonna happen, the more you fall into and trigger this kind of obsessive thought process in which you end up going through things over and over excessively and in which you end up blocking out reality. So the stress of feeling that there is only today and there is no tomorrow, there is no future, there is only the present, that can weigh on you as an INFJ and an INTJ. So to the point where you forget that you are a long-term thinker, most of your ideas will take years if not decades or your entire life to realize. And so what is the rush? Why are you pushing yourself so hard today? Why do you feel it is so important to happen right now? Do you not realize you have your entire life ahead of you? Do you not realize that most INFJs and INTJs peak in their mid-40s? Do you not realize that most of us take a long time to get there? Why are you in so much of a rush? Eventually you're gonna have to combat that assumption, that failed assumption that there is only today and you're gonna have to realize that it reduces the effectiveness and the scope and the originality of your vision. When you push and rush yourself, your ideas become more shallow and superficial and your actions become less in tune with what you originally had anticipated or imagined. If you are too much in a rush, the ideas you have will become sloppy and you will become frustrated because they're not what you imagined them to be in reality. So as a partner, friend or family member of an INFJ or an INTJ, the good things you can do is you can be the good distraction, you can be the catalyst, you can be the bouncing block, you can be the person that puts the INFJ or INTJ in order, you can be the one that gives the idea, that one idea that will give them that eureka. Your information, your patterns, your possibilities can provide the INFJ or the INTJ with that what they need to go from point A to point B to point C. You are the person that can break the INFJ or the INTJ's obsessive behavior. You can wake us up in the right way and at the right time. 
you can show an alternative way and you can of course more than benefit from the INFJ or the INTJ's vision. Something you'll recognize about an INFJ or an INTJ is they are never bored by themselves, you know, they can keep going forever, they always have something. No matter what's happening, there's always something going on there and that's interesting and that's positive and that means there's always something to discover, always something to learn about you, always something to find out. So an INFJ or an INTJ can provide us and the world itself with what it needs to change. It can be the one that brings out the next level innovation. It can be the one that brings forward the next utopia or the next uh, sacred place or a great amazing environment or adventure. The INFJ or the INTJ has within them these amazing original ideas that you've never heard before and a lot of these ideas have great potential and so I hate to see these ideas be shut down so I hope that friends and family members will encourage them and will so I ask you as a partner or friend of an INFJ or an INTJ do you have any struggles with INFJ or an INTJ in this how do you deal with this mode what can you do or how do you currently deal with this uh, way of thinking and approaching life and to you as an INFJ or an INTJ, I have this final advice, never give up. I have given up on my YouTube channel and on my website so many times. I have thought that I gave up, only to come back and to realize I was still so fascinated with the idea and with the potential that I couldn't let it go. Yeah, I took down my channel, I blocked everything, I turned, deleted it all. But I kept thinking about it and it kept coming back to me and so I realized I had never truly given up and it was still there and it was still waiting to happen. And when I realized that I would never be able to shake this idea from my head, I realized I couldn't give up. I realized I had to keep going. I had to see it out to the end. Yeah, it would not be possible for me to give up. It would be possible for me to shut it down and to live with the regrets and to think about it for the rest of my life. But when I realized my ideas would be with me forever, I realized there was no turning back. I had to keep going and I had to stay dedicated and I had to keep pushing myself forward. The only way out was true. And so far, I'm so happy I came to stick to that decision and that I've kept going for these two years. Even though it has been difficult at times and even though it still is difficult sometimes. I've learned something important about dedication and that is... There is nothing wrong with changing your path to your goal as long as you stay true to that end goal. There are a million ways to realize your ideas and if one turns out to be blocked or if not, one is not immediately possible, there is nothing wrong with taking another way. For example, getting a day job was perhaps the best thing I did to relieve some of the pressure I felt when I started to realize it was cutting into the quality of my videos and when I realized that my videos were becoming rushed and sloppy and when my work was becoming too desperate. The day job gave me time off and gave me uh, some umbrella to rest behind so that I could keep working towards my ideas in a healthy and consistent manner without becoming too obsessed. And as an INFJ or an INTJ, you might need to make some concessions in this regard as well. And there's nothing wrong with making some short-term compromise as long as you stay dedicated to your long-term end goal. And with that, I want to say thanks everyone for watching this video. And uh, please know there's a big active Discord community, a chat forum. I will link it down in the description if you have any problems with this or if you need to discuss this further. There's lots of people out there that are going through the same difficulties you do from different personality types and from different perspectives. And they're all quite eager to help and to support one another.